Amen. When I go to heaven, I know I will see, I will see my darling Jesus. I will sing hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I go to heaven, I know my I will see. I will see my loving Jesus. I will sing hallelujah. Amen. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. person I am determined to really be with is Christ. So I'm here today privileged by the grace of God to our international director, Daddy Paul Rika and the wife, Mommy Linda, and our national coordinator here, Pastor Holness and the wife, and all our leaders here have been privileged to minister today, practical love and restitution by practical love, by restitution, and forgiveness. I pray that the Lord will touch us in Jesus' name. Amen. Because everything you go through, remember this, is Christ. By Christ. For Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please take your wonderful seat in Jesus' name. By the special grace of God, I just want to... Give this brief testimony so you will know that this conference, God wanted it, and we being here is not by accident. And every word of God that has been talked to us here, been preached to us here, should be addicted in us. Amen? It should be our lifestyle, our character. So on the day that I left the house, that was on Wednesday, um, from my house to where we can board a boat, a, a ship to our airport. You have to like go through water, a sea, to get to where our airport is, our national airport. So I'm getting there around um, 12 a.m. in the night, around 12.30 in the night. We went there. They said, oh, we are sorry. The boat just left. And there is no order except the order immediate one. So we ran there. And getting there, I so, said, oh, we are very sorry. They just left. So, and that was the last one. I, meaning my flight will have been postponed. I couldn't have made it here. So my husband said, maybe we can try driving. From that place to where the national airport is in our country, by road, we take you like maybe four hours. And my flight is, the, the boarding gate will be closed at four. At this time, it's already 2 a.m. So we need four hours. We only have two hours to meet the deadline for the flight. And then the driver said, Mommy, if it is of God, we will be there less than two hours. So let's start driving. So we started praying, worshiping God. We lift up the journey to God. God, if this is your will, let us get there safe. Before we know it, like in one hour, we are almost half of the journey. Then the exhaust of the car got fired. <laughs> Hallelujah. The exhaust got fired and the car was shaking, was pulling. And then my husband said, as long as the car did not stop, you don't need to stop. The driver said, I will accelerate as long as the car is moving. So we keep on going. On the way, we, we un unknowingly to the driver, he met uh, a big hole, unknowingly. So the car went in and up. 
unknowingly to every one of us, including himself, I hit my head on the ceiling of the car. My neck shrunk in. I felt my hip. And my husband said, if it is the will of God, we will go on. If it's not the will of God, we'll go back home. But on getting there, it was exactly four. And the flight I used to come here, this trip is Royal Air Morocco. They don't delay for anybody. In fact, they don't want to stay in any African country for too long. <laughs> so when I get there, everybody from the security um, at the airport, they were saying, this should be a miracle because the flight has not come. They have never delayed. But while we are in the vehicle, my husband said, if God is willing for you to go, that flight must delay. So we prayed that prayer point seriously. On getting there, they said, this is the first time they are, get, they are being delayed in coming to our country. They delayed. <laughs> Amen. They delayed. I went and did all my process. I still entered the plane. They returned me for some certain payment. I came down and made the payment. The plane was still waiting. When I entered the plane, everybody was saying, oh, you are a miracle woman, a miracle woman, a miracle woman. <laughs> This is just to encourage you and I that God has come here. He has brought us here for perfection, for healing. Every word of God from every minister should be addicted in you. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Each and every one of us have our story being here. It is not just a story. It is for you to know that this conference, it is for your healing. It is for your perfection. It is for your heaven. On coming here, we went to the flight. Being there, they said they will close at 7.10. We reached there at 6.45. The woman looked at us and said, I can't book you. I said, I have struggled. You don't understand. It's, I don't understand, but you can't go. I said, all things work together for good. We went again. We came in the morning. They said, stand by. By adventure, there is a space. Me and my elder sister, we started praying. God, let there be space. Let there be space. The moment, the two, we are the last two. The moment we entered, the woman said, the, plane, the flight is full. Nobody again can enter. So I know God brought us here to perfect our life. Praise the Lord. We are talking presently on practical love by restitution and forgiveness. You see, when you do restitution, most of the times what the devil brings to your mind is you are going to be embarrassed. You can't do this. You will be molested. He makes you to fear. But he never brings the other two side of restitution. He will never tell you you are going to heal a soul. He will never tell you when you restitute, you are going to show the light of Christ. He will never tell you when you go to restitute, you yourself will be free. He will only tell you you are going to be embarrassed. He will only tell you you are going to be, to be molested. Because you know once you get that off your chest, your name will be in the book of life. Praise the Lord. It makes, the devil makes it very difficult for us to forgive because he wants to keep us in the prison. When you don't forgive, you yourself, you are in a prison. Whenever you see such a one, whenever their names are being mentioned, there is this unease inside. There is this lack of peace. There is this burning inside. But when you forgive, there's this total freedom that you yourself cannot explain. That's why he always endows us from doing restitution and making it easy to forgive. He makes forgiveness hard, which is not practically hard. Because you are not doing it for the person. You are actually doing it for yourself. Praise the Lord. I want us to see Leviticus chapter 6, 1 to 4. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. 
I will read faster. What the Lord said about restitution. What is restitution? Praise the Lord. Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 1 to 4. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul, if a soul sin, and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor, in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or had deceived his neighbor, or had found that which was lost, and lieth concerning it, and sweareth falsely. In any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be, because he had sinned, and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found. Hallelujah. The doctrine of restitution has begun since beginning. It is with us. It is part of the qualities of what we will have to do to enter heaven as a Christian. Before we come to the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are things we do because we are in darkness. There are things we say because we are in darkness. There were actions we do. There were worse things we did because we were in darkness. So automatically when we come to the light, we have to make sure the light shines, including in our past. We have to make sure the light shines in our future. If you say you are born again and somebody knew you, that you were one person that destroyed somebody's house, but now you are born again, you have not gone back to settle with them. I tell you to date, they have still not believed that you are a Christian. Until you go back and make amends, the words that will come from your mouth, the, the action they will see, the regret they will see, they will say, indeed, this one has changed. And it will not only be the testimony for you, you don't know that by doing that restitution to that individual or individuals, you are teaching them the standard of holiness. You recollect their mind. They will be saying ash words to you because at that moment it's like you hit somebody with something. But maybe after you are gone, in their inner man, they will be saying, am I a Christian? Am I pleasing God? Because this one, this person just did, I don't think to that stage you have ministered you have sowed a seed of righteousness the benefit of restitution is bigger than what we understand you delivered yourself you are saving another person praise the Lord I want us to quickly look at two biblical stories of restitution and forgiveness being manifest practically by love hallelujah we are talking about practical love by restitution and forgiveness. That means how restitution and forgiveness enhance love among the children of God. I want us to look at Genesis chapter 20, the story between Abraham and Abimelech, which we have heard many times, but maybe today you will get to see another aspect of the incident between these two fathers. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 20 from verse 1. I will read and please follow with me the story. And Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and Shodom in Gera. And Abraham said of Sarai, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarai. Praise the Lord. What did Abraham just did here? He has lied. Why did he lie? If we had to, when he is coming back to restitute to Abimelech, he, Abraham did restitution to Abimelech. He will see it here today. He's going to make confession why he lied. 
So many people will say, I'm going to do restitution. Oh, my sister, my brother, forgive me. I've done you wrong, but just forgive me. You have not completed that restitution. You have to detail. You have to detail what is the wrong. You will see it here. Abraham detailed why he lied. You just don't go and meet somebody. My sister, forgive me. I've wronged you. If you don't forgive me, I will go to hell. If that person said, I've ah, forgiven you, she's battling to save her own soul. Maybe she does not want to listen to you, but I tell you, you have caused more harm than good. Because when you go, she'll be thinking, or he'll be thinking, what is the evil? Did she lie? Maybe she's the one that's put here. Oh, maybe she's the witch. Ah, she's the one I dream. Have you not caused more harm than good? But when you detail specifically what you did, you have delivered the soul as you have delivered yourself. The Bible says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. <laughs> for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Abimelech did not know that Sarah belongs to Abraham as a wife. Did he? He only knew her as a sister. But here is the God that demands righteousness even in the midst of ignorance. Are you getting the point? He demands righteousness even in the midst of ignorance. This tells you that the standard of God cannot be complex, cannot be uh, compromised. Many people will say, what if my mother did not know? What if my father did not know? This is Abimelech we are talking about here. He asked before he took. He said, who is this? He just didn't just take because he was the king at that time. He asked for permission. And he was told, he's my sister. So he said, oh, I am free to add another wife to my wife. Wives. He took Sarah with the integrity of her heart. But what happened? God demanded what? Righteousness. Your ignorance cannot stop God from, from his standard. So it is better for you to fast track and learn deeper about God and live all this carnal, all this careless Christian life. It will not change the reality of God's holiness and his judgment. The word of God said, but Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself, including Mama Sega, add to the lie. She said what? Yes, I'm his sister. Because Abraham had pre-warned her. If you say I'm your husband and they killed me here. You yourself know that God will not be happy with you because you are trying to kill a covenant child of God. So she being afraid, she compromised. Many of us might find ourselves in that situation. You might compromise for your husband. You may compromise for your children. But when God requires perfection, whether you compromise to save a soul, whether you compromise to save a life, Righteousness is demanded. Are you getting the point? She, even herself. Thank you, sir. She, even herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands, have I done this? God... You know that if I don't lie for my husband now, he will be removed from this job. If I don't lie for my son, this scholarship will be taken away. God, you know, you know if I don't lie for this document, I'll be deported back to that poverty place. God, you know, if I don't lie, I will not be accommodated. I will not be part of the leadership. I will not be... One thing or the other, God knows, yet God demands perfection. He knows. He knows everything, yet he demands perfection. Abimelech said, And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, 
I know, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also, God was in the matter, withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffer I did not to torture. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he will pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. One scene is about to clear the entire generation of Abimelech. One scene is about to end the existence of him and his generation. There is no little lie in the Lamb's book of life. There is no restitution in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord. We have read in Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 1 to 4. It said everything you get violently, everything you get falsely, is it reputation? Maybe you lied, you forged to have it? <laughs> Is it that you use violence, fist? Is it that when you stand, you have the charisma? So you use that as the advantage to get what you want. <laughs> is it that you have the wealth? Is it that you have the fame? Is it that you have the opportunity? And you make use to get negative things? The Lord said, you will restore it. The word of the Lord continues to say, Therefore, restore back the man his wife. God withheld him from sinning because he was innocent. God withheld him from sinning because he was innocent. You see that sin, you are thinking of what to do next. You know, most of the time, human beings, we don't sin emergently. It is pretend. Sin does not come easily, emergently, or unexpectedly, especially restitution. It does not come. It is pretend. You, you think about it before you go into it. That's why most of the time it is difficult to go back and say, I did it. Because you knew, you knew this was wrong. And you went ahead and do it. So for you to go back, you now with your clear conscience and go back and undo, it is very difficult. But I want to put it to you today. When you see the other side of restitution today, it will be easy for you to do it in the name of Jesus. The Lord is telling you, maybe you are here, you are planning on doing something bad. He said, this woman has done me this. I want to get her back. And the thing is, you have the way to get her back. You have all the ways. God is the one we telling you. That little voice in your inner man that is telling you, don't do it. Don't say it. Don't take this action. Don't react this way. You know, most of the time, there are some people who really pulled you because maybe, like it's normally said, they too are hot, so they are trying to look for somebody to hurt, or maybe they're an agent, or maybe the devil sent them one reason or the other. You know, inside your inner mind, you want to react. The Spirit of God is telling you, don't speak like that. But you know, many times, we, we don't listen. Before you say it, he will tell you, don't. But when you go ahead and do it, he will tell you, go back and rectify it. Before you speak, God was withholding Abimelech, and thank God, he listened. That is what saved him and his entire household and his generation. The Lord is speaking to you. Are you being troubled by your husband or by a friend or by a church colleague or by whoever that you have determined to say, no, enough is enough. I will show them that I have this power. God is saying, don't show them. He is warning you. Take that warning. You have the power. You have the strength. You have the capability. You have the wisdom. You have the influence, you have everything. He's saying, don't take that decision. I plead to you, I beg you, don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Because that one restitution you are going to do, 
the devil might make it very difficult for you to go back and undo it. While you keep on delaying doing that restitution, the enemy is walking behind your back. You don't know that restitution can open door for your children to be paranoid. The devil will be using that. You are praying. He said, she has not gone to do what you have asked her to do. Allow me to be dealing with the children. Boy, maybe you have not seen it yet. Maybe everybody, everything looks fine. Everything looks okay. It's just one day you begin to see some manifestations there and there. You say, oh, the devil is attacking me. It's because you have refused to obey God. He warned you. You did not listen. You went ahead. The devil has come. Praise God for Abimelech, he listened. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. Abimelech did not keep it as a secret. Like the Lord will come to us of generation of today. We think we are smarter than God. The Holy Spirit will come and said, Sister, this thing, this thing, go and make it. Abimelech did not keep it. In the morning, as a king, as a man with authority, what the Bible says, his including servant, they were called. And what did he do? He said, I have sinned. The Lord came to me and said, if I don't go back and rectify this sin, if I don't tell my husband about this child that I've given birth to, he, he thinks that this child is, child is not his child. If I don't go back and return that money I stole, if I don't go back and make amends in my office about the person I spoiled, if I don't go back and make amends about the person's reputation I've damaged, if I don't go back and make restitution about the character I've spoiled, we are doomed. He called the servant. Many of us said, this is an unbelieving man. God came to him. Even Satan know when God comes. It doesn't need to be a Christian to know that this is God. God is all powerful. But this is what he did. He did not hide his sin. He confessed it. Many of us here, we pretend to be perfect when the Lord is trying to make us perfect. We think we can deceive God. I'm telling you that God is a spirit. God is eternal. You are just but a dust out of many dust. You cannot hide. So if he tells you, go and do this, you are afraid of me. You are afraid of another person. I tell you, as human beings, after one week, we are forgotten about your matter. We have enough to think about. But the devil is hindering you. Say, so what will they say about you? Ah, uh ah, -uh, is it not Carolina? You, your name will parade in all the states. You will be trashed. No. There are lots of taxes they have to pay. If they discuss you, maybe two hours. Maybe one day. And then they will remember the clock is ticking. I have to go to work. We will forget. But God in heaven, when you obey him, the noise will be there for a while. But it will be over. And while they are making that noise, while they are speaking about you, <laughs> look, there is a powerful thing in gossip. Many people don't know. When two people are gossiping somebody, as they are speaking with their mouth, in their heart, they are thinking about themselves. You know that? In their heart, they, are, they will be saying, look at this sister. Ah, ah, this sister is not holy. It's not inside the spirit of, are you holy? She is talking outside. Or he is talking outside. Well, the Holy Ghost is flogging her inside. She will not put it on the face. She be, ah, me, that's why you see me the way I sit. I sit perfect. The Holy Ghost is saying, look at you. You don't even wake up in the night to pray. She is talking about you, but the Spirit of God is condemning her. So your focus is not anybody. It's Christ and your eternal life. Reputation comes by God. No matter how hard men try to spoil it, if God is about to lift it up, it will be lifted. Please him. Please him. Hallelujah. The Bible said, And Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offend thee, offended thee? That thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. Can you imagine? The man was in pain. Ah, ah, you want to kill me? 
You want Abraham, what have I done to you? That you want to clear my whole family to push me into this sin. What you justify, is, it, is that the way God justifies it? You know, many a times, none of us love criticism. None of us. There's nobody I've seen that said, I love to be criticized. But I want to advise myself and you, whenever you are criticized, sit down and watch if what they are saying is true. It will help you a lot in your Christian journey. When people say, you, you are lying, you are lying, you are lying, you are lying. Sit down and check, have I lied? Why did I lie? And please, don't force the Holy Ghost to keep quiet. Because women, <laughs> we are good at that. You will force him to keep quiet. And he is holy. He will be keep quiet, but you will not enter heaven. When the Spirit of God is saying, this criticism, they are criticizing you, they are talking, they are talking. This one is true. Don't say, no, ah, Holy Ghost, how can you be saying that? You are talking to somebody that knows you more than yourself. Sometimes we kill the Holy Spirit, we quench it because you feel you are unknowing. Have you lived for 1,000 years? Here is a God that has been from the beginning that is still going to be to the ending. And he's telling you that this is wrong. And you are still fighting against it. Before you pray for the witches in the church, begin to pray for that, that your inner man that is battling against God. Because that's the strongest witchcraft I've ever known. That is not a man talking to you. That's God. And you are still resisting God. And yet you become here by thunder, by fire. Father, consume every witch. If Holy Ghost begin to consume. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, see a man that also fear God. You know, when I was studying this, I meditated, I said, Abraham will not be sleeping when the Holy Spirit, you know when the Holy Spirit is behind you, except you are not a child of God. But if you are a child of God, you can't sleep. Father, and I, keep quiet, you sinner. That's the Holy Spirit for you. Holy Ghost, don't call me in your mouth. You will just, you be, there is no peace until you do what he is telling you. I believe Abraham was not sleeping the same way Abimelech was not sleeping. His wife was in another man's house. And he will be saying, this is all my fault. Why did I even lie? Hey, Holy Ghost, look at you, covenant man. Is it you that would be, the world is going to come through? Holy Spirit can preach more than anybody. Praise the Lord. And Abraham said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place. Is that not a reasonable reason? People don't fear God. They will kill me. They don't even want to know whether I'm a prophet or not. Who cares about your position? When she is ready to talk, she just flout you anyway. Who cares about your women leader? Women leader for who? Are we not all in America making dollar? My friend said, sit down. This is Abraham. Abraham said, they don't fear God. I said, I was doing it to preserve my life. You might be finding yourself in that situation. When you come to church, everybody, mommy, mommy. When you go home, your husband is maybe an unbeliever. So if you don't come and do, if I slap you, that your mommy will leave you. Your position, all your pride, it just break like glass that is smashed. Your confidence is gone. So you are looking for a way to harm him again. No. Take the warning like Abimelech. Do not. Because it will be hard for you to come back and do it. But I want to give you the confidence. See here, because God was with Abraham and he obeyed. He is now speaking the truth as it is. He's not covering anything. He said, yes, I, I did it because there is no God here. Upon, upon begging Abimelech, he's even telling the truth that is even harder than the one he has lied. Can you look somebody in the face and say, you, you don't serve God. A king with servant, with army, said there is no God here. That's why I lied. The word of God continues to say, surely the fear of God is not in this place. 
And they will slay me for my wife's sake. What a land of immorality. You will kill another man for a woman. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. Abraham, you cannot justify this matter. It's your wife. Is it not the wife? Have you not paid bride price? Has she not left the house? You cannot justify this matter. That's how some people go to do restitution. You know, I did not want to commit this, you know. My sister, go straight to the point. Stop digging around. I don't want to commit this, you know. But the devil, eh, when the devil possessed me, I, I jack. I went there, I came in for. That's why I did it. Go straight to the point. You are trying to hide something. Thank you. You are trying to hide something. You, you want to do... How can, in our language, they say you want to do nyanga. You want to do style to confess. Even that little one you have not confessed is still written. He said, you know, I, love, I used to love you. I don't know what the breeze just entered. You know these witches and wizards that... <laughs> Today's Christianity, everything is witches and wizards that did it. Some people, them and the witch have to stand in the day of judgment. He says it's the witch that make me to lie. If there, if there is a way, the witch will slap them. Because the witch was not there. It is you. You proposed it and you did it. Even upon the warning of the inner man. Even upon the warning of the conscience. Even upon the warning of the Holy Ghost. You still went ahead and did it. Now you don't want to go and undo it. If you want to make heaven, you must. You have to. The same boldness, the same audacity, the same power of disobedience you used to do it when God said no. That's the same humility you have to take now to go and rectify it and glorify the name of Jesus. The word of God said, and yet indeed, and it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, this is the kindness which thou shalt show unto me. At every place where we shall come, say of me, is my brother. Come. Though an in an joint to commit sin, what? A sinner will not go unpunished. It was pre-planned. You see, I told you, God, is not, God does not give us standards that he knows we cannot meet. This line was pre-planned. Abraham said, I told her, as we are taking our journey now, anywhere we go, deny me. So when you are saying, I do not know what come over me, it's the work of the devil. I tell you, that adultery you commit, is it, just the near apple as a spark. <sighs> it takes a longer time for you to begin to imagine, for you to begin to undress, for you to begin to enter the room, for you to begin to enter the hotel. It took time. While you were going to the hotel, the Holy Spirit was saying, don't go. You say, but God, don't go, but God. I said, don't go. He said, but God. And you went. And now you said the devil possessed you. There was a battle going on and you choose one side. You choose one side. Now the light of God has come. Choose your father again. Go back and say, I am no longer the child of slave. I did it. And how I did it is step by step. This is how I did it. What requires you to come for counseling to your leaders? Maybe it might be a serious marital restitution. Come to them. I tell you, they will pray with you. They will go with you. You will conquer. It might be about document. You are afraid of Africa. That's where I'm coming from. I'm not talking monkey language. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've not seen monkey in my life. But when they say Africa over here, they think we are jumping with Babu in the street. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Go and fear God. You see that restitution? It is for your exaltation. Be at peace. God is with you. Come for counseling. Study the word of God. Pray and go. God is with you. I want us to go faster because we will see another story of a man that forgive, that you yourself will know that I need to come up to this stage. I need to come up to this stage. The word of the Lord said, to wander from my father's house 
at every okay 14 and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servant and women servant and gave them unto Abraham and restored him who Sarah his wife you know there are sometimes the way we go to do restitution uh, is the what really brings the problem you have stolen money from somebody you are going to pay back and you are going with abusive words if we forget about that money, we deal with that word first before you handle the money. But the way we go to do the restitution matters. Are you broken? Are you truly sorry that I really hurt somebody? You damage the reputation of somebody. Do you know the agony you put that individual through? Do you know the sleepless night he or she was thinking, am I really like this? Am I? And yet you are going to amend the way. You are going in pride. You know that thing I said the other day, just forgive me, oh, forgive me. Forgive me. You know this is heaven. If you don't forgive me, you go to hell, eh? <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are forcing the person out. You, can you imagine? You know if you don't forgive me, you go to hell. So you are using hellfire to push her. Instead of you to go say, I am sorry. I really, I felt, I'm feeling bad of myself. That I did what I did. But I've come back to my senses. The light of Christ has come into me. I'm sorry. The way I just said it now, if I have offended you, you have even forgiven me. But if I have come here with power, you know, I say, let's put this restitution first. Let's undo this one. that You, you, you hurt me, you come here again with power. Abimelech. The, the Bible says, Abimelech took sheep. He gave him gift. He had it. If, if it comes to the point of you doing it, do it. Maybe you are going to apologize to your sister. You can buy a book. Say, my sister, please, uh, um, I came to apologize. I also brought gifts for you. Do you know that gifts can soften the heart of anybody? Anybody, no matter how tough that individual is. Gift has a power to control. That's why Abimelech did this. He knew when he gave gift and he apologized, there is no way Abraham would deny him. The way you go to restitute matters. You have done wrong against your junior in the church. We have members. We, if, forgive me because there is nobody junior in the church. You have a, a church colleague. By the grace of God, you are given the chance to be called a woman leader or something or something. You really know that as a leader, you hurt this one. But because you are a leader, you just want to just do it anyhow and go. She will accept you because she fears God. But God is holding it accountable for you. You hurt your leader. You hurt your children. You know many a times as mothers we get so angry because we want the children to be quiet. And they, they are not quiet. You use some hard words on them. You don't know what that word is digging. For you to humble yourself as a mother and say, my child, I am sorry. You say, it's me that gave back to her. I cannot tell her sorry. You, who gave back to you? You just came from heaven and you found it. No. You be, humility goes with the power of restitution. You have to be broken from inside. Know that I have hurt God and I have hurt man. And I'm going to make amends. Oh God, I go in the spirit of humility. Abimelech said, I give you gifts. And men servant and women servant and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleased thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Do you see how he still called him? Called, tell, what did he tell her? Because it's not Sarah that did the restitution. Are you getting the point? She has to do her own. And said, Abimelech, I am sorry for lying. I joined hand with my husband to lie. If you are here, you have conspired with somebody. You instigated somebody against another person. But the person you are behind the scene, the one is in the forefront, you have to go and do your own restitution too. Because you instigated, you, you pushed her, you pushed him. Though you, you were not in the forefront. He said, I have given thy brother. Since you have not come to tell me that he's your husband, so I will still... Tag it to you that he is your brother. 
But to Abraham, the Bible said once, he gave him back his wife. Because he has explained himself. He is now clean. Thank God for the leadership of our husbands. I want you to be submissive under your husbands. Every man is a light of God. Even if he has not yet come to Christ, there's a purpose why he's standing in front. Because of the action of Abraham, that's why Sarah was forgiven. The Bible continues to say, Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus, she was reproved. Did you see what Abimelech did? <laughs> Abimelech reproved Mama Sarah. Mama Gio was reproved. What did I say? By an unbelieving king. He said, this man is your covering. It's your eyes. Do not harm him. Do, he reproved her. Do not join him to lie. You be a good wife. The word of God said, and Abraham prayed unto God. And God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servant. And they bear children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. You see? He, he was only seeing what? The sin, the lie to him, out of my, the integrity of my heart, but punishment was already going on. Until Abraham prayed. When you do restitution, I want to encourage you with this. When you do restitution, maybe at that moment, the words that came out of that individual were not nice. But I want to tell you, when you leave that place, when they are behind you, they will thank the Lord for you. Scripture, you are fulfilled scripture. What did the word of God say? <laughs> Let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and do what? Glorify our Father in heaven. The glory is not for you. You have been embarrassed, fine. You have been molested, fine. But when you have gone, the person is glorifying God. Say, ah. Anyway, I, say, I thank you for this person that came and restituted today. Really, this thing has been a pain. But as she has restituted, I'm feeling peace now. But you have gone. But the Father is receiving the glory. Yet unknowingly to you, your name is added in the book of life. Your children are being delivered. When Abraham was satisfied, when Abimelech apologized to him, when he prayed for him, the Bible said what? All the wombs were open. The maid servant, Abimelech's wife. When you do what God wants you to do, God will bring abundant blessings, known and unknown. I urge you today, there is no mountain, there is no restitution, no sin, name the sin, that God, that the blood of the lamb will not make it white as snow. That restitution is for your honor, it's for your glory. The devil might exaggerate it, but I tell you, God will exaggerate the honor. He will exaggerate the blessing. I want us to see in 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 to 22, David and Saul, I will have to read this fast, maybe all the scriptures or maybe not, because I have less than, I don't know my time, mommy, but I was given one hour, 15 minutes. So, 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 to 2. Verse 1 to 22, sorry, 1 Samuel 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Egnidi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goat. And he came to the sheep court by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which 
the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good, seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe, privily. Hallelujah. This has been a long, 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 long battle for David. He started serving his boss. But God has anointed him as king. He started rising above the fame of his boss. Enemy, enmity came. Saul said, how can they say David I trained? Is it not me that give David my shield? Is it, what, what are they saying? Is it not me that permitted David to go and fight? When everybody was laughing at David, was it not me? I think the whole Saul of Saul. It was me that ordained David. It was me that said everybody should keep quiet. I believe God. It was me that approved the glory. It was me that exalted the honor upon this boy. All of a sudden, they now say he killed 10,000 and me 1,000. I will kill the 10,000. Is it not because they are seeing David? When they don't see David, will they see 10,000? The devil came. You know what happened to Saul? The pride of life. That's the simplest thing that catched him. The pride of life. He has felt too big. He has felt too honored. He has conquered. He, in fact, who is David? How old was he? Was it not me that gave him shield? Was it, was it not me? Was it not me? Was it not me? Is it not us that started home? You know? Where is she coming from? After we have labored, we have raised holiness for a woman. You want to come and speak to me anyhow? Pride of life. I fear. When the Bible says the first shall be the last, I fear. Because so many of us as Christians, we think it is the date we give our life to Christ that has been recorded. We forget that is the norm, is the perfection and holy living that is being recorded. We calculate, I've served the Lord for 15 years. I've served the Lord for 32 years. I've served the Lord for 50 years. If peradventure God will allow you to see your spiritual state in all that 50 something years, maybe it is two days that you are perfectly holy. Serve Christ as if you give your life to Christ today. The word of the Lord said, the men around David, Saul has been running after David from everywhere. He sits, he goes there. He stands, he goes there. In the meeting, she goes there. When we're on Zoom, she goes there. Ah, ah, David, he sleeps, David. He wakes up, David. Saul was behind David like somebody that was chasing eternal life. Everywhere he goes, Saul will make sure David will be living in caves. He drove him out of his own homeland. He took the wife that was rightfully given to him. Say, she's my daughter. What are you talking about? Will you stand here? Deprived him. If you want, let him go and fall in immorality. In fact, when he falls, I'll be happy. That's the easiest way to kill him. Behind him, like a mask. You move this way. Say, ah, what clothes is this sister we are today? Hey, look at her. Hey, she, ah, she wear green and orange. This one look like monkey. Okay. Miss, <laughs> everything. You don't know that pride of life has come and the devil is using it. And by the way, you are still speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. that's, that's God for you. That's God for you. Don't be a, a useful, useless instrument. Don't. He said... This David, this 10,000, he will die. I will be behind him. But what happened? David has been crying to the God that ordained him. David was innocent. He did not want to be a, a king. He was perfect with his shepherd work. The man was killing lions. In that old Israel, there could not have been any shepherd like David. 
He will have been a teacher of shepherds in Israel. Another title that was big in those days. God said, that's the one I want. It was way in the field. And they bought him. And they chose him. By the special grace of God. Upon all what David had suffered. Upon all what David. Am I not blessed? They are blessing me in the pulpit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. David has suffered. What David went through, I don't think any of us may, might be able to stand that. Might. I use the word might because I believe that if David can stand it, we, are, we can stand it. I believe that after today, no matter what happened, you will stand firm for God. So that's why I use the word might. Because if David was flesh and blood like you and I, yet he stood and overcome even in the midst of everything, we can. We can do all things through Christ that strengthened us. Listen to the people that were around David. They were the ones keeping record of prophecy. David was not keeping record of prophecy. It was the people that surround him. They said to David, look at you, look at you. You remember that time we went that seven days fasting and prayer? Up the mountain, inside the kohuhuka. When we, you know when we were praying? You know the Lord speak to sister this. That one day you will destroy your enemy. Look at Saul. Ah, ah, in the just finish this man. And this our suffering is over. You, Saul pushed David to the point that David was begging for his food. That's the point. He disarmed him everywhere. He could not come near Israel. 3,000 men of war were chasing David. <laughs> You could be in the position that this individual hated you that and, and lucky for you, I use the word lucky because after that persecution is going to be honor. Lucky for you, that person is a spiritually rich God possessed person. Physically, she is behind you or he's behind you. Spiritually, he's behind you. When you sleep in the night, you are being chased. You are being on, you, you are everywhere. And peradventure, he is also rich. Maybe he had connection. He calls in your workplace and they're oppressing you there. Everywhere, 360 degrees. That's how Saul was oppressing David. I tell you, many of us seated here, if we had that chance, Saul would have been dead. Two of us. This is somebody that does not like me when I speak. This is somebody that detests the power of God in my life. This is somebody that wish me dead. Saul took a javelin and threw it at David. So he had the evidence that this man wants to kill me. He barricaded him from everywhere, even the neighborhood countries. He, to the point he has to be living in the forest, in caves. He has to be begging food. He sees his salary. He sees his wife pushing him to go and commit immorality. Do you know how David, the body of David, will be born in, in that desert? And here is a man lying flat. You know today Pentecostal fire, prayer, die by fire, die by fire. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, die by fire, I consume. And that is the person I'm praying for two hours in the night. He's lying before me. That is the person I have been speaking in tongue for. That is the person I've been saying, Father, crush. Smash, bulldoze, backfire, and God brought him right in front of me and said, Bulldoze, backfire, smash, do anything you want to do by yourself. Just imagine. Let David shock you with Christian life. The word of the Lord said, and David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe, privily. What did he do? He did not touch him. He just went and got an evidence that, my father, when you come back to normal, when you come back, 
to reality. I'm going to run. I have 10 minutes. He said, when you come back to reality, you will see this. And I will go fast. And now he said, and he said unto his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. He still called him what? Master. After you want my life. In these days, 21st century, I will call you master. Me, me, I will call you. I know you want. I will call you master. Yes. Because we are holy. Yes. Because we are the light of God on earth. Whatever we do, we don't do for our name. We don't do for our satisfaction. Paul the apostle said, I die daily. I denied myself so that the name of Christ will be honored. Yes, my husband or your husband or whoever. You may say, my husband has gone out and he has committed adultery. He has given birth to a son and he's dying again, telling me to bring that son in. Yes, I will bring that son because I seize him as another soul that I'm going to bring to Christ. Yes. I see. The word of the Lord said... I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed. To him, Saul never backslide. To him, he never saw the wrong side of Saul. He said, God has chosen him. God has ordained him. As long as it is God that put him there, I will wait on God to remove him. I will not use my arm to remove him. Far be it for me that I will spill the blood of the one God has anointed. Every child of God is chosen by God. Why do you desire to kill another soul? Why do you desire? Because you are hot? Let God fight the battle. Forgiveness. We have talked about the institution. You see what David is saying? He's, look, for you to forgive somebody, even when the person did not say sorry, your spiritual understanding must be higher than that person. I go again. For you to forgive somebody who have hurt you and never say sorry, your spiritual understanding must be higher than that person. You don't need to wait for them to say sorry to you. Because you, you are the light. The light does not wait for the darkness to come. The light vanishes the darkness away. The word of the Lord said, and he said unto and it came to pass afterward that David had smote him because he had cut off Saul's cart. And he said unto this man, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing. Even when he cut off the garment of Saul, he was in pain. I want us to rush quickly. And David also arose afterward, I mean verse 8, and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stopped stooped with his face to the earth. What did David do? He honored him. <laughs> Somebody that wants to kill this man. Somebody that he knew that this man would kill me. He still bowed. Have you reached this level of forgiveness? That you really know that this person is doing this with all impunity to, to destroy my soul. To destroy my Christian life. But yet still I'm going to stand because my soul is way important than the actions of this individual. The Bible says, David forgives Saul as if nothing, as if Saul did him nothing. He bowed down himself unto Saul. My lord the king, and when Saul looked, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore, hearest thou men's words saying, Behold, David seeketh thy heart. I run quickly to verse 18. Okay, I will need to read this so you will hear what David will say. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen out that the Lord had delivered thee today in my hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes speared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, he even called him his father. Hmm. See ye, see the scat of thy robe in my hand, evidence of destruction, but he could not use it. 
He said, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil or transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou hauntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee. And the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Who, who did David depend on for his judgment? That's the power of forgiveness. You know why we struggle to forgive one another? It's because we depend on ourselves to fight for ourselves. We, de- we think we can do it with our own mouth, with our might, with our power. David knew he can't. He knew when God fights, it's the perfect fight. So he allowed God to handle the matter. He said, God judge between me and you, but I will not lay my hands upon thee. You desire my soul. I don't. You wish my downfall. I don't. There is no transgression in my heart against thee. Come up to that level. That's the place of holiness. Forgive. Remember we are talking about practical love by restitution. And forgiveness. We have dealt with restitution. How practically you see Abraham and Abimelech did it. Now we are talking about forgiveness. This is practical love. Moses, David did not say, I will avenge myself. He said, I know I am but a flesh. I cannot avenge myself. But God will avenge this. I go quickly to verse 18. And thou should this day. Okay, I'll go to 16 again. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this the, thy voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Do you see the power of forgiveness? It will make your enemy to bow. When David spoke those words, Saul realized that, Ah, I have backslided. I have backslidden long ago. I need to recover myself. The person that he was chasing, he now said, my son. Is this the voice of my son? You know, sometimes when situations are heated between two people, I want you to leave it to the hands of the Lord. It might be the enemy has come. It might be the devil is the one that is doing all that. Let God fight the battle. Look at how Saul was broken here. When he heard the words of David, he realized himself. Look at what he said. He said, and he said to David, thou art more righteous than I. He confessed it. I have tried to kill you. I have poisoned you. I have I've done everything. You still refuse to harm me. Righteousness is in thee. That will be our testimony in Jesus' name. He said, I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded the evil. And thou hast shewed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thy hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord rewarded thee good, for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, what happened? Instead of Saul cursing David, he is what? Blessing him. When you forgive, you, are, you become a mentor. You know that? When you forgive the unspeakable, people look up to you and because, you know why? They are seeing God in you. They are seeing the character of God in you. They are seeing the figure of God and they will be left with no option than to bow to the authority of godliness in your life. We should learn that. We have a physical, we have a character before us. How many concerned brethren have been hurting our father and the Lord? Yet today, daddy will stand here and say, let's pray for them. How many of you have witnessed that? We go to leadership and say, let us pray. I don't know what is wrong with these people. But that devil should bow in the name of Jesus. And those days, some of us not coming up to his level yet or understanding what he was saying. Say that this thing, let's fire this fire. Ah, ah, that you have for your warrior, you are still saying that. Ah, my God, I wish they could say that is fine. So, no. 
No. Perfect holiness is in this. When you forgive the unforgivable. When you forgive, the power of God will, you will be the light. Instead of course, it will be blessing. God will be honored. And as God is being glorified, that's how your life is being blessed. That's why you see things will be done for you. You will wonder how. I will rush. I don't know, maybe five minutes or three minutes now. <laughs> I'm sorry, mommy. <laughs> and the word of the Lord said, And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king. Do you see? Saul knew that David was going to be king. He knew, but yet he was, he was behind him. Because why? Darkness had covered the heart. So it blinded the vision of King, king Saul. Is this not somebody you should have encouraged? When you come into power, he will remember you. But darkness has blinded the vision. Unforgiveness caused you to be blinded to the blessings of the future. You, you hate somebody that you don't even know that spiritually this is your partner in serving the Lord. You don't know. Maybe this is your prayer partner God has brought to you. But because the devil knows if the two of you come together, there will be terror in the kingdom of darkness. So he put distance between the two of you. Let God have his way. And the children of God are twice wiser than the children of the world. We understand better now. I forgive you, you forgive me. I know we are meant together to conquer this evil world for Christ. In our time, while we live, men will say, indeed, there is a God that is holy. And we, they will point at women. They will, in North America, they will say there was a sister. There was a woman that lived that made us to fear God. I tell you, from today, we will put the enemy to shame. Amen. We will forgive one another. That sister that you and he are now are not getting along. Maybe the, you know when David is when David was a king. Do you know that the Bible said David was surrounded with men that were warriors? That one man will stood from a distance and throw his spear. Three hundred men will fall flat before that spear will fall. One shooting, shut the scripture. One throw of that man, he was a warrior behind David. What if the enemy has come the way, the way he came between David and Saul? I tell you, if Saul was not blinded by unforgiveness, if Saul was not blinded by the flesh, Saul would have lived a longer years. The battle he died in, he wouldn't have died there. Because David would have been there to withstood those enemies for him. The reason why this constant unforgiveness is not ending. They talk the matter between you and your sister, it's refreshed. They, they settle the matter in the zone, it's refreshed. They settle the matter in the chapter, it's refreshed. You don't know, it's because the devil knows if zone one come together. You don't know if the chapter leader and the women choir come together. You don't know that if the children teacher and this account come together, I will be destroyed. That's what he's doing. We forgive. I forgive you. Forgive me. Forgive everyone. Has it, has it cut off your head? You are still standing. Forgive. We are we will overcome. We have overcome. Tell the flesh, I kill you. I forgive. He said, Swear now, therefore, unto me by the Lord that thou will not cut off my seed after me. He knew automatically power has been given to David. He began to seek for security. He said, Promise me. I know I'm going, but please don't cut off my seed. Let it not be that what I have done to you, you will come back to harm me, and David forgive. And the word of the Lord said, And David swore unto Saul and said, and so, swear unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men cut them up unto the hold. David, forgive. Mommy, I'm please pleading for just 10 minutes, ma. Please. Pastor, please, just 10 minutes. Please, sir, just 10 minutes. I just want to talk quickly about what is really love. We have seen restitution, practical restitution with love. We have seen forgiveness. You and I need to come up to this level. This is the level where God said, David is a man after my heart. Praise the Lord. 
I want us to quickly look at Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 14. Love. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 14. I read faster. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not be a false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt... Let's read it together. Thou shalt love... You cannot give what you don't have. I want to plead with us to understand sometimes. When you see some certain people are angry with you, I want you to know, especially women, whenever you see women are constantly angry with you, sisters to sisters, sit down and observe. In the inner, they might be stressed. And that stress is coming out. You cannot love if you don't love yourself. The Bible did not say love your neighbor and love yourself. It said love the neighbor as thyself. It means love yourself. Show that love that you have for yourself to your neighbor. Practical love. You don't want yourself to be backbiting. You don't want people to speak evil about you. Then don't do it to another person. That's the practical love. I, I will not love you to be happy for me. When you see me, you smile to me. The teeth are all white. God has created it that way. We don't have an option to change it. But when I turn my back, you, you finished me behind my back. I will not like it. So why do I want to do it to you? Love thy neighbor as thyself. That is love. Whatever you know you don't like, don't do it to another person. I will not like it if I, God favored me to lead and you want to pull me down. Why would I want to pull you down? Ask thyself. I will not like for you to hold my money. I trust you. You said borrowed me and I borrowed you. I will not like for you to hold that money and push me to anger. Why would I want to do it to you? Love the neighbor as thyself. Our topic is practical love by restitution and forgiveness. Whatever you don't want for yourself, don't desire it for anybody. Don't. You see? No man can hide from God. If, you see Saul, he did, he did evil against David. But when it was time for God, it came at the right time. Even if this person is behind you, let God have his way. Finally, he says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. When you look at the happenings in the world, when you look at the way the world is going, you should be more careful for your soul than trying to perfect any other person. You should be more careful how you walk upon yourself than how you are walking on other people. Be careful. You will be walking on that person. She is not like this. She can't do this. She must. She must. You are forgetting your own garden. Solomon said, look upon me not because I am black, for I left my garden I became a busybody in another person's own garden. We are in the last days. It is, it is very real if you are still in the spirit of God. We, even when you are praying, for you to break through the atmosphere, it will take you time. It was not like that. It is telling us that the era is dark. It's, dark, it's getting darker. Stop hitting each other. Fight for your soul. If you tell a sister something once, something twice, the Bible said depart, not in enmity, but in prayer. Fight for your soul than the way you fight for other people. Hey, 
Hey, how many things have you sacrificed to come and lose it just for one person? Show them love. We will overcome by love. This year, when we went to Abuja, what was our women topic? What? It was about love. And I, let me reverse some spiritual something to you. I know, I don't know if other people knew it. The way things were going on, hey, this one, hey, that one, people begin to like divide it, us. Like fear begin to crap in. Like we begin to say, I don't trust this one. Suspicion begin to crept in. But if you are sensitive, after April Women Conference in Abuja, the entire whole world worldwide, it shoot up spiritually. Yes. Time, billion times to pack that language. That was when I know that love is the strongest weapon in this spiritual battle we are fighting. So particularize it. <laughs> Don't hate. Be careful. You might be behind somebody. To change that person, you are losing your Christian life. Because you might be behind the person discussing the person and the angel of that has come to record your time of prayer has gone back empty-handed. You are behind this person. You are behind this person. The angel of God that came to have quiet time with you, their time of quiet time was there and you were not kneeling down. He went back up empty-handed. Your, your, your house in heaven is crushing. And you are busy, you are busy hating. You are busy not forgiving. What is it that you cannot forgive? What is actually there that we cannot forgive? What? The word of the Lord said. Hmm. And that knowing that the time that is near, high time to awake out of our sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. We have spent too much time in not forgiving one another. We have spent too much time in arguing. We have spent too much time to say, I am right. We have spent too, time, too much time to defend. The night is far spent. Why in the day? Enough is enough. We have Jesus to please. We have our soul to take to heaven. We are at the injury time, the most risky time of all. Battle for your soul. Particularize what you hear. Be an hypocrite to yourself. Don't smile when you know that I can't smile. It is better to be healed than to be left broken. I beg you, if I offend you, come to me and say, Sister Finda, you know, this thing you did me, I felt it. If I am sober and I want to make heaven, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, say, rebuke a wise <laughs> and it will profit you. But rebuke a scorner, it will harm you. If I am wise and somebody came to me and tried to amend my way because as she is saying I did something, I might not be conscious or I am conscious, but that thing is being recorded against me and there is somebody that is trying to help me. If I am wise, I will say I'm sorry and I will amend my ways. We have spent a lot of time in gossip. We have spent a lot of time in battling ourselves while we are to confront the enemy of our soul. We have spent a lot of time in, in doubting the messages of God. We have spent a lot of time in doing negative things. Today is the day. The light has come. Put off the unforgiveness. Tell the restitution. Let the world take it. Let them speak it. But you will make heaven. But your children will make heaven. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting, and not in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision. For the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. 
First John chapter, four, chapter 3, 18 and 22. You will see what love is there. First John chapter, chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. You will see what love is. I plead to you. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. And make no room for the flesh. I will love. As we sing, let's stand on our feet. I will love. I will love and love and love. I will love. I will love Jesus' people. I will love everybody. Jesus taught. I should love everyone. I should love. I will love. I will love. I will love. I will love. Just this one prayer point. Say, oh God. Oh Lord Jesus. Take me to the perfect place. Of holiness. Let me make this your prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Make me to practically love. To do restitution. To forgive. Take me to the highest place of holiness. Break myself. Break my pride. Take away my inner anger. In the name of Jesus. I work my spirit man to perfection. I work my inner man to perfection. I work my spirit man from slumber. I take it from the darkness. I bring my body from the darkness of unforgiveness. I bring my spirit from the darkness of restitution. I bring my spirit from the darkness of hatredness and I bring it to the light of Christ. I will love in the name of Jesus. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Take me to the higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on hell, unstable land, higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher land. I don't want you to sing with me. I want you to pray. I want you to say, God, break this hardened heart. I want you to pray, Lord, the heart is too much. I have been hurt too much that I have even lost the place of forgiveness. But I come to you today. I know you are capable to make me to forgive whoever, whatever. However, I have come to you today to bring me back to that place of love, to particularize it. I have come that your glory that was lost in my life is found today. I have come that the honor that I have given away by unforgiveness, by wrath, will be given back to you today in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, dear Father, we pray, as your word has told us, that we should put on Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh and the loss thereof. This we ask that you will do in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.